Hey guys, in the fast lane here. In this video, we're going to be porting and polishing an Eldebrock Victor X 4760. Now, I mentioned it in my other video when I was porting out the Skunk 2 Ultra Race Manifold. With this particular one, you have to cut it open. Unlike the Skunk 2 Ultra Race, you don't because it unbolts with some Allen bolts on top and it can split open so you can get to it. So I'll show you how to cut this thing. This one's already cut up. I just got it back from a friend that cut it for me. And uh, let's take a look. Let's open it up. This is the back. There's the cut right here. We wanted to cut it a little higher because of the velocity stack in here. We don't want to come too low. King Motorsports charges about $500 to do a job that I'm about to do. They cut it just like this, right down the middle, and then straight up where the plenum comes together for the throttle body. Basically, you just cut it exactly like this. I got some pictures on in the Fastlane Facebook. So it's just like that. Cut it straight under the X on the Victor, all the way down, and then straight down here. And that's what comes off. So we'll set this aside, and when you're done, obviously you'll re tig it back together, or you can hire somebody to do it for you. Now this is the GSR intake manifold, the 4760 Victor X. Uh, I picked this up for about 224 shipped on eBay. I'll put the link to the eBay listing. It's the cheapest one out there. Uh, they don't show it like this though. When you buy it, it doesn't show Elderbrock Victor X. But as you can see, it comes in, it's from Elderbrock. Now, it shows just a flat manifold with, with just casting, but with no Victor X or Elderbrock on it. But I was worried about that too. Like, oh, is it a true Elderbrock? But it's just for a picture. So I guess maybe they can't display it or who knows. Anyhow, so you cut it like this. What I'll be doing is I'll be polishing this out. We'll be grinding this down and smoothing it out. And I'll show you how to do all that here in a few. Now this is what's crucial is right here. This is where your velocity is right here. Right, where the, right around this lip right here. And you want to keep it high enough so that you can go in there and polish. And another reason why I cut it low is because if it was up, cut up high, you could barely get your hand in there to get this job done. And keep in mind, you still got to go a good nine inches down in that hole to pour it out and polish it. Now, one more thing. When you throw it on the bandsaw, you're going to throw it on like this on the top where it says Elderbrock Victor X. This is going to lay on the table and then you're going to pull it through the saw. Now right here you got the freeze plug, I guess that's what they would call it, they put these in blocks. You want to cut right under that freeze plug, as close as you can get to where it starts. We don't want to ruin the intake manifold and dent it up, so I'm just going to take some bubble wrap shipping packaging and I'm going to put it on either side so I can work with this. So stick it in there like that. Like you say, you don't want to dent it up or anything. There we go. Now we can just drill right in there. We're good. I'm going to be switching out my camera this time. Right now I got my HX20V Sony. And it's a point and shoot camera, but it does 60p at 1080. So it's a, it's a nice camera. It's still, when I first bought it, it was $400. Um, <clears throat> this is the second one. I actually bought two more because the first one... Uh, in the zoom lens, got all of this material inside it and fogged it all up and I couldn't get it out. I hit it with a vacuum, I blew it out, and then when I blew it out with the compressor, it got a little condensation behind the lens and it's pretty much it. Once that happens, you're not going to, you can change out the lens, but the lens is still expensive. So anyhow, I got a couple cameras and I got some CDCs and stuff and swapped them out and, and pieced it together. So now I got two whole cameras, but I'm not going to be using them to shoot. So what I'm going to use is my trusty old cell phone. I've used it in a couple videos. Uh, it does 1080p. It's the Note 2. And I have a tripod stand. It stretches, and it can bolt up to the tripod. So you hook the phone right on the back like this, and now it's mounted on the tripod. 
but this will give real good quality too, but it's a sealed case so I won't get any of the particles in my uh, camera. I know this isn't part of the uh, port and polish video, but just so you guys can see what it looks like. It's kind of cool, I thought it was neat having a cell phone on a tripod mount. So right here you just hit the button and uh, camera. Swap it down to the video. And there you go. Alright, so this is the cell phone. See, it's not too bad. What we're going to do is we're going to use a couple homes from the last video on the Skunk 2 that we used, the intake manifold. We got the 180 grit and we have the 80 grit. These are inch and a quarter or three quarters, I believe. I'd have to look it up, put it in the description of the video. This one right here is three and a quarter, and I'm not quite sure on the abrasiveness of this home, but hopefully we can fit it in there. If not, we'll have to stick to, oops, we'll have to stick to these guys. And these guys were the original ones that I was planning for my intake manifold, but my friends that I ported out, these were actually a little bit too small because his ports for the K20 with the Skunk 2 Ultra Race, they had much bigger ports. One more thing, don't forget your safety goggles. Seriously, this stuff will cut your eyeball up and you'll never see it again. So we're just going to put a little bit of gear oil in there on the first one. I didn't do this with the other manifolds and I kind of wish I did because it chews up your uh, hones pretty bad. And the reason why I didn't do it is because I figured, well, if I put too much oil on there, it's never going to cut. So I'm not going to get a port. Well, I was wrong about that because when I put the oil on, we did it towards the end of my buddy's manifold, it actually started cutting pretty well and smoothing out quicker. Alright, so let's get in here. Okay, going to hit it up with the three inch one. Put a little more oil in there. Let's see what this one does. So after that 3 inch one, it really made a big difference. Um, I'll get some before and after photos at the end of the video so you guys will be able to see a little bit closer up in detail. But as far as it goes, I'm going to start hitting these up. This is only going to do about halfway because it can't quite get all the way in there like it did on the Skunk 2 because the ports were wider. But it really helps with rounding off the velocity right here and smoothing it out. So when you get it in right at the tip, it just bevels on the top here and just makes a nice velocity lift. And I'm going to do that to the next three, and then we'll come back and see how it's going. Okay, this is just a rough end. Just kind of hit it with the three and a quarter home, and just got halfway in each port and rounded it off. And it's really coming out nice. And one thing that's really nice about this oil, and I wish I would have used oil earlier, it would have saved the camera because you don't get any dust particles of the little tiny grains of metal flakes flying through the air. This kind of traps them. So you live and learn. But it's it's starting to come out really nice. Looks way better than it did from the beginning. This was the one I took some pictures of right before I went ahead and uh, ported it a little bit. So I'll get some after photos. Now this isn't going to be the finished product. See, I have some grainy spots here and what I'll do with that is I'll either use a little grind tool or I'll just use a file, which more than likely I'll just probably use the file and just come on in there and kind of hit it up sideways. I might use a little die grinder. I have one with a little um, abrasive brush on it a bit, maybe a wire brush, but all this is going to be smoothed out and baby smooth. We're gonna hit it up next with the 180 grit inch and 3 eighths and that's kind of a tight fit so this will probably really polish it up so I'm gonna hit this up here in just a second.
so what I've started using is this little ball grinder. It's just like hard fused sand together. You can get them at Walmart or Home Depot. Anyhow, so starting to come in here and I'm just kind of turning it, the drill on and going slow. And what that's doing is it's getting those little hard imperfections of the casting out. Like right here, there's some more. And it just come like this. Now I'm trying to stay away from the velocity right here. If I do happen to touch it, I'll just get the hone and kind of round it off smooth again. So I've been grinding away, and I got it pretty much dished out real nice. I'm going to hit it up with the hone again to get the velocity smoothed out. Grind down all of the little thick castings. Next, uh, before I do that, I'll just show you what I was doing. I was just, you saw earlier, but I was just coming in like this, sideways, kind of rounding it. Letting the drill kind of just lay on it, not pushing, because I didn't want to make any dents. I just want to get a nice smooth flow. Now for here on these nubs I'm going to take them clean off because they're just interrupting with the flow and I don't like it. Alright I switched it up a little bit and I've been grinding it and it's coming out really smooth with the 60 grit but you got to be really careful. I didn't really want to use this in the beginning because this thing rotates 10,000 RPMs and it's heavier and it can take big chunks out. So you have to be really careful going in and out real smooth. If you leave it sit in one spot too long, that's it. It's going to put a nice dent in there. So I'm just getting a rough end. I'm just getting all the casting out. Just a light back and forth. Uh, this is a 4.5 inch blade. 60 grit. And it can handle up to 13,300 RPMs. G2 makes it. Uh, it's called the ceramic flap disc. If you guys are looking for that. So here's what I've been doing. Just turn it on and I'll show you real quick. So it really polishes it if you don't press too hard. But what I'm concerned about is you don't want to start making a lip, like a flat lip, because it's rounded off. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to get this casting out with this, and then I'll go back in with the hone and round those lips off real nice. Now that we get that nice smooth finish on the outside, I'll still hit it up with some fine grit sandpaper just to get rid of the little burrs. But now we're going to put the three inch, three and a quarter inch hone back in there because I need to round these off nice and smooth. And once we do that, put a little oil in there, they should be coming out nice and round again. Here's where we're at. I cleaned it up a little bit, just washed it off with some water and soap. Um, I don't quite like the velocity on these. They're kind of just like a stock intake manifold. So what I'm going to do is I take a Zephyr Hill bottle and it fits nicely in there and if you don't pressurize it too much it'll have a little squish to it so it'll actually round out every other part. I'm going to take the hot glue gun we're going to go back to the old uh, style of making a velocity on the first one I did the skunk too like this because it had bigger ports and I just hot glued some uh, let's see what do we got uh, 60 grit sandpaper hot glued it on here and then we put it in the port. For this one, we're going to be hot gluing some 60 grit on a Zephyr Hill bottle. First thing, go ahead and put your Zephyr Hill bottle in there. Push and turn. It'll make some marks on the bottle so that's where you need to put the sandpaper. Now just cut a few strips out. Long little strips. For bottle. You get the point. Take your hot glue gun. Glue it on the 
strip. Smooth it out. There's one. Alright, let's see how this works. Yeah, there we go. I'm going to do that to the rest of them, hone it one last time, and that's it. I'm done. Only thing I'm going to worry about is the inner casting right here where the two casts come together. And uh, we'll be pretty much finished, other than we got to pour out the plenum right there. And uh, that's about it. Same procedure, I'm just going to take my hone, run it through there, hand sandpaper. So you guys get the idea, then put it together, tick it, and that's it. After it's cleaned and everything, put it on the vehicle. For the plenum, just take your file and file the inside of it. Get these little jagged edges off, and then that's pretty much it. Then uh, I'm just going to take a little hone, hone it out, grind down this little strip right here for the casting where the two halves come together and they pour the mold. Um, and that's pretty much it. Just gonna smooth out this, set it back together, have my buddy tick it up, and then we'll be uh, off to the turbo build part two that everybody's been waiting for. Now to get this mirror finish that everybody likes, just take a little piece of 60 grit paper, and you're gonna have to go fast. That's the only way you get that polished finish. If you do it with the other stuff, like 400, 800 to 1000, 2000 grit, it's going to take 10 years, you know? So, you just want to go really fast. And you can see it's starting to become a mirror. And that's really smooth, even with the 60 grit, because the 60 grit actually starts to kind of flatten out, as you can see, and it starts polishing itself. So just go fast, you'll get that nice chrome look, like I'm starting to get right now. And then for the journals, you just got to, in between, you got to go pretty quick. It's tedious, but if that's what you want, that's what you got to do. You just keep at it, and you'll get that nice finish that you're looking for. For this rough casting right here in the middle where the two halves come together, I'm just taking one of these rock bits, a little sand bit, and just kind of going in here. Grinding it right out. Okay, this is where I'm at right now. I got most of the casting out by using the sand bit right here. And uh, just kind of grinding it out. Got this where the two pieces come together and the mold. Got that pretty much completely out of there. You got to leave these little notches in here because they actually go for your uh, sensors on the back. They got to screw in to the plenum, so I can't take those off. I could take them off on the first one. Here's the other half. It had two of those right there, and I took them completely out, so uh, it's nice and smooth. You don't need those. Those are just for the secondary fuel line, and I'm not going to be using one of those. Uh, so another key thing is, is right along the edges right here, you want to make sure you get everything with a piece of sandpaper and make it really smooth because the air is going to flow like this. And the plenum is going to come in and it's going to come off the walls. And if these walls are rough, it's kind of depleting the whole purpose of porting and polishing this thing. All right, so I'm getting real close to finishing this up. I'm just taking these little bits right here. You just screw the sandpaper on. And I got a short one. I don't have a longer one. So here's where we're at. I kind of put it in here and ground out this two-piece casting. And then right here... I don't know if you can see it right here. There was a little lip actually coming from the inside right here. You can see where it kind of changes a little bit brighter. I ground that down so when it's pulling the air from the intake and going into the motor this way, it would hit that lip so that would slow it down too. So I suggest kind of taking some of that out. So here's pretty much what I'm doing. I'm coming in here and I'm grinding it nice and smooth back and forth like this and then kind of working it where the two halves come together but over here if I can get in here you can see this right here this white spot when I hit it it won't go flat it won't go flush at all so each runner right here those lines when I start here 
Let me move this light real quick so I can see. Here we go. If I can focus. There we go. If I start right here, you see how it's, there's really nothing, but watch. I'll hit it. And you'll be able to see the light, the line, the indention I'm talking about. So there we go. Now all you see is just that piece that's sticking out. So when you come over here, you can actually see it a little bit. It bevels out. And I'm going to go ahead and grind that down. That'll widen it up a little bit. It's actually, looks like maybe a eighth of an inch, sixteenth of an inch. Alright, so I got a little carried away. And I started rounding off the inside of the cylinders here. And I noticed that when I started taking the bit and going up, it was missing spots. Like, you see the dark right there? That means it's not perfectly flush with the other parts there's a higher that's a the dark spots a lower spot spot all right so my buddy's getting ready to take it up so he's gonna put it in the vise here and then uh, I'll show you what it looks like afterwards okay so here's what we're gonna grind out as you can see right here see this little lip and it, it has just a little lip but over here on the sides I don't know if you can see it really up on top on the sides over here it's a lot smoother it meets perfectly you can't even feel it with your fingers so all I have to worry about is just this right here this little lip so I'm going to take the tool the uh, drill and I'm just going to drill it back and forth and then I'll come in with some uh, 60 grit sandpaper and I'll give it that polish effect so here's what it looks like as you can see got just a little bit of dip right here maybe right here not much but uh, it's looking pretty good. It's all smoothed out. You can barely even see the line anymore over here. There's the line right there. But when you come over down at the bottom, you can hardly see it at all. So I'm liking the way it turned out. What I did is I used the stone, went back and forth, and then hit it with the hone, the uh, 100 and, or the 80 grit. Actually, no, this is the 180. And I went back. I did it bare dry. I didn't put any oil or anything. And now all I'm going to do to finish it up is hit it up with some 60 grit. And I'll go pretty fast, polish it up, and that's it. The next video I'm going to do is I'll be cleaning it. So i got to get all these shavings out. As you can see, there's a little bit of shavings up in there. be cleaning it out, and uh, then I'll be using some wrinkle black paint. And I'll uh, tell you guys why I'm going to... Go with the black.